Thank you for being here at Cray Games today. Uh, we invite you here because we would like to know more about you, your association, and uh, you know we would like to spread the awareness about stereotypes in uh, STEM fields, but also in the gaming industry, which are really close related. My name is Miha and I am 23 years old. I am the founder of an organization called Nordic Women in STEM, and alongside that, I am also a student of electrical engineering at the Denmark at Denmark's Technical University. I started it back in 2021, so it's been two years now, or it will be our second birthday soon in April. And uh, the organization started because uh, when I started my bachelor's within electrical engineering uh, back in 2019, I was one of the 11 girls out of 85 people, um, and I remember that was celebrated because at the at our department because it was the first time in so long that the uh, number of girls who got into the the career wow. was was a double digit uh, and it was wow. 11 out of 85 so that's like roughly 12 13 percent and it was kind of funny to look back but i remember the very first day just looking around the auditorium and thinking where where are the women <laughs> because in my school and high school in my math and science classes it was always a 50 50 ratio mm. roughly uh, so i was quite naive that i did not do enough research about how it actually is out at university but it was very different and uh, my friends and I, we would always talk about the fact that women are heavily underrepresented within STEM and especially the very technical educations like electrical engineering, mm -hmm. software, IT, cybersecurity. But we would always discuss it, but we never really knew what to do about the issue because it seems like a really huge issue and big, uh, too big for us to solve. Um, but. I just kind of went along with my studies and it was during my fourth semester where I met a female professor who was from the electrical department called Sylvia and I think she just opened my eyes to the fact that role models can have a huge impact on the way you think and the way you see a career path um, and just seeing Sylvia there kind of a light bulb light up and I thought okay like maybe the reason we women are underrepresented and girls don't choose STEM education is because they don't have enough role models to look up to who they can relate to so that's when I started Nordic Women in STEM it started off as being just a social media thing where I would just share STEM stories as mm -hmm. I would call them and the aim of such stories was to highlight the women working in STEM around the Nordics um, and and I think especially on like apps like Instagram and you're scrolling through you don't even realize but seeing certain posts set some thoughts in mm -hmm. your head um, that you don't even realize you're not actively thinking about them but they still leave an impact so the uh, point was to share these STEM stories through Instagram and on the website so that a young girl can you know like see a woman who maybe plays badminton just like her and be like oh mm -hmm. I do that like that's very relatable to what I did so maybe I can also be a part of STEM and it was also to kind of um, help and outface the many stereotypes that exist within STEM and luckily the social media thing went really well and we got a really good response um, and sadly we also got a lot of stories where mm. girls would write and women who are not a part of STEM but working in other fields who would write how they were discouraged from joining STEM by either their teachers or parents or friends um, therefore that's when I thought that now it's time to take that one more step mm -hmm. outside of STEM uh, outside of social media sorry and start doing workshops and events where we can give young girls between the ages of 10 to 18 19 a chance to work with STEM as a hands-on concept mm -hmm. because of course you have maths physics chemistry biology but I think they tend to be very theoretical and you don't mm -hmm. get to you know like work with a robot mm -hmm. and like touch those those kind of things of like work with programming and yeah. drones and all those cool things which for the longest time I've seen as non-girly yeah yeah so the aim uh, so now we also do events and workshops around different schools in Copenhagen mm -hmm. yeah. that's so nice Sadly, the, I see all these stereotypes that exist uh, about STEM, about being a person in STEM, especially being a woman in STEM. Mm -hmm. I think they are the biggest barriers that a lot of young girls uh, don't use STEM as a career. Because I think the stereotypes are simply just so negative about how engineers and people within STEM sit in uh, basements and code all day. And I think that's also a stereotype that's 
very widespread about gaming as well. Yeah, yeah. The, that you know, you sit in a dark room, you drink energy coding. drinks all the time. Yeah, and I think that is completely untrue. But sadly, a lot of people believe that. A lot of young people believe that, and I think it's so important to outface these stereotypes because just the image of a nerd that we have in our mind is someone who's of course extremely smart but also has no social life doesn't have any friends mm-hmm. or can't really hold a conversation for more than a minute and i think these are the kind of images that take people aback um when they think about joining stem because you know no one wants to end up like that <laughs> yeah <laughs> well so, <laughs> so i think uh, those are just some of the stereotypes that exist which act as a huge barrier mm-hmm. from allowing young girls to choose stem and i think the saddest thing is that when i still see some women in stem in shows and movies it's sadly still shown as you know being you being in a lab 24 7 mm-hmm. and you just being on top of your class all the time knowing all the answers okay but i think that's an issue as well because a lot of people think that if you are not getting all a's and the top grades throughout your entire school life you are not fit to be a part of stem mm-hmm. but i think you know that's completely untrue and a lot of stem degrees they don't actually even use that much math Mm -hmm. so uh, or coding and programming and of course everyone is there to learn so i think it's so important to just highlight that and just highlight the fact that these stereotypes need to be outfaced asap if you want more people to join stem Mm -hmm. yeah and i think that uh, another problem is that uh, (coughs) it happens the same in the in the gaming field like if you are a woman you have more pressure on your shoulder because you need to prove that you're at the least equal to yeah. your uh, male game player uh, body, but uh, you know there is like the eyes that is on you. Exactly. You know that's such a great point because I think already from a young age, sadly, research shows that parents and teachers they see boys as naturally gifted when it comes to tech and STEM mm-hmm. and gaming, whereas girls they're not seen as naturally gifted in those areas, which you know is is not true but that's just how people perceive things so i think if a young guy if a young boy is failing at gaming or stem people are willing to give that uh, that gender more chances to excel whereas for girls y- people tend to put a stop on them if they're not naturally good at mm-hmm. it uh, which i think is so sad it's another stereotype yeah, you know exactly. <laughs> I think the biggest thing is, especially now we're on the topic of role models Mm -hmm. um, and stereotypes, so I think just the fact that you guys are talking about the issue is such a huge step in the right direction, if I may say so myself, because of course the first step to solving any problem is actually realizing that it is a problem. And for the so many years, past years, the issue has been that it's never actually seen as an issue, Mm -hmm. um, that women are not given a seat at the table in STEM, and that leads to so many issues with product development. I can go on and on about that. (laughs) Uh, So I think, you know, just the fact that you guys are highlighting the issue is so big on its own because we need more companies to highlight the issues so that people get talking about them. Mm-hmm. People realize that it is an issue and we need to do something because for example in Denmark from 2030 it is expected that um, people within IT and engineers will be, there will be a shortage and I think as a graduate soon I find that quite scary. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I think it's just the fact that you need to you know highlight these problems mm-hmm. that are so apparent in the world around us. Um, so I think that's, that's a great step that you guys are doing and then also I think just highlighting role models Mm -hmm. um, has a huge impact. Yeah, because uh, there is a problem also with awareness of the situation. People think like, oh, I never faced this situation. I think like everybody can play, everybody can be an engineer, even if it's a woman. But mm, if you go deeper, there is a lot of stereotypes that lay under, you know? Exactly. would say follow your interests and um, if you have an interest in something you will exceed in it um, everyone has the potential you just need to go for it and don't let uh, the world stop you there are a lot of negative comments that one hears but please do not let that stop you just follow your interests and follow your heart So, uh, like I said, we do events for young girls and before we used to do do, uh, single events at different schools in high school, but recently we have started a girls STEM club because I think it's like you come to an event and then you're thinking about it, the girls are thinking about it for a week, but then after two weeks, 
start slipping out. Mm -hmm. um, so the aim of the Girls STEM Club is to kind of give young girls a chance to work with STEM over a longer period of time and then really explore what STEM is. So like we have a different theme every single week in like electrical engineering and then civil engineering and all that. So in March, uh, we launched that around two weeks ago. Okay. Uh, so on Women's Day, I will be at the Girls STEM Club teaching girls to code, doing what I love. <laughs> wow, that's so nice. And we hope our community will join you because if, if you're here in Denmark. I and love that. We're always looking for volunteers and role models. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Thank you very much for Thank being uh, with us today. Thank you so much. And for sharing your knowledge and your experience. <laughs> it was glad. a pleasure. I'm glad. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you again. You. <laughs>